Now the news from the Voice of America. American embassies to stay closed. Deadly flooding in Afghanistan and Pakistan. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting live from the VOA News Center in Washington. The American State Department says it will keep 19 of its embassies in the Muslim world closed until next Saturday. In what was called an extraordinary move, more than 20 American embassies and consulates were ordered closed Sunday. Late Sunday, the State Department extended that closure, but it said the embassies in Baghdad and Kabul will reopen on Monday. Officials believe al-Qaeda is planning a terrorist attack on an American target somewhere in the Middle East or North Africa. That follows recent prison escapes in Iraq, Libya, Pakistan, and six other countries. The VOA's Michael Bowman reports. Even America's best protected diplomatic posts, like the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, are vulnerable to attack, according to Iraq-based security analyst Amir al-Sadi. The American embassy in Iraq is the biggest embassy in the world in area, staff, and fortifications but it is not entirely safe from rockets and mortars. Michael Bowman, VOA News, Washington. Forecasters are predicting more heavy rain Monday for Pakistan and eastern Afghanistan. More than 80 people in those areas have already died in flooding from previous heavy rains. Many homes have been destroyed and much farmland is flooded. Karachi, Pakistan has been hit hard. Floods washed away roads and knocked out power to large parts of the city. 16 people were hurt Sunday in Jalalabad, Afghanistan, when a bomb exploded as a vehicle carrying a state prosecutor passed by. Attackers detonated the bomb using a remote control device. The prosecutor's guards and 12 civilians were among the wounded. You are listening to the news from the Voice of America in Washington. Iran has a new president, Muslim cleric Hassan Rouhani. He took the oath of office before Parliament Sunday, a day after being approved by Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. In a speech, Mr. Rouhani called for dialogue with the West to produce what he called antagonism and aggression. So I will say this if you want the right response. Don't speak with Iran in the language of sanctions. Speak in the language of respect. Mr. Rouhani, who easily beat conservative rivals to win election, promised to pursue less confrontational policies and try to ease international sanctions on Iran. Palestinian negotiator Saeed Arakat says Israel will free the first of four groups of long-held Palestinian prisoners next week. The prisoner release is part of the recently reached agreement to meet to talk about resuming Israeli-Palestinian peace talks for the first time in three years. Mr. Arakat said in a statement that 26 men will be released August 13th. Israel, however, says the release will happen only if the Palestinians prove to be serious about peace. Peace negotiations began in Washington last week and will continue in the Middle East next week. In Thailand, the government of Prime Minister Yingluck Shinawat is asking Parliament to approve legislation that would give amnesty to people involved in political protests as far back as seven years ago. Opponents are preparing to protest outside Parliament to keep the bill from passing. Reporter Ron Corbin in Thailand now on why the protesters oppose the bill. Renewed anti-government rallies were launched Sunday despite the government's imposition of the Internal Security Act over three districts of Bangkok. The demonstrators oppose the amnesty bill, saying the legislation is part of a package of measures that would include a pardon for former leader Thaksin Shinawat, the Prime Minister's older brother, who remains in exile avoiding a two-year jail sentence for corruption. A pardon would allow him to return to Thailand and avoid further charges. Ron Corbin for VOA News. 
Bangkok, Thailand. Egypt's military-backed temporary government now says it will charge the head of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohammed Bunti, and his deputy with inciting violence. They will accuse them of starting violence that led to the deaths of protesters outside Brotherhood headquarters in June, just days before the military overthrew President Mohamed Morsi. Three, two, one, ignition. Japan launched a rocket loaded with supplies for the International Space Station early Sunday morning. The rocket carried food, water and other supplies, along with a small robot named Kurobo, which will serve as a companion for a Japanese astronaut who will join the crew later this year. That's the news at this hour from The Voice of America. For more on these and other stories from around the world, around the clock, go to voanews.com. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News, Washington.